Okay, now we're going to talk about authentication modes. Now, there are two authentication modes. There's Windows only, and there's SQL and Windows. And this is one of the few times where it's actually easier to change something in the GUI than it is in T-SQL. It is possible in T-SQL, but it really is much easier in the GUI. However, once you get the T-SQL down for it, then you've got it and it's much easier to change then. Uh, but initially, it's much easier to change in the GUI. Come on, I'll show you how. Okay, here we are back in our VM in Management Studio, and we are going to, to talk about and change the authentication mode. I'll go ahead and show you how to do this. You go to the server itself, so I can expand this and get to just the server if I want to, to, to take away the busy screen. And if I right click and go to properties, come here to security, and then I can see right here, enable Windows authentication mode and SQL Server and Windows authentication mode. Now, the difference between the two modes is fairly simple. On the top one, you can only use Windows accounts. Now that can be uh, AD accounts or they can be local server Windows accounts. And when you use SQL Server and Windows, of course, you can use either, either Windows accounts or uh, SQL Server accounts. And a, and a SQL Server account is one that SQL Server manages itself. You don't need any kind of other Windows permissions to the server at all. All you need is a SQL Server login and then you can connect to the database. This is a really good option for uh, say if you have Linux boxes that are connecting to your SQL box. So, uh, and, and of course, why would you have a Linux box connecting to your SQL server, right? Well, for things like uh, Informatica doing ETL loads against your, your server or for uh, having Oracle queries that hit your server because you need to pull something out of SQL and put it into Oracle or into DB2 or in a website situation where you've got uh, external connections coming in from the internet that are going to be hitting your SQL server especially, right? And of course, a long time ago, we used to have three authentication modes. We used to have Windows, Windows and SQL, and then SQL only. But SQL only just doesn't make any sense. You always want to be able to allow Windows connections if possible. They're not only more secure, but they're easier to work with. So SQL, SQL Server authentication only just doesn't make any sense. So if you don't want to use AD accounts, just don't put any AD accounts in SQL Server. You don't have to actually block them at this level. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to Windows only just for the sake of doing it. And I'm going to, I'm going to take this opportunity to show you a cool little feature in Management Studio that you get absolutely, I'm not going to say everywhere, but you get it in a lot of places. And that's this little script button up here. I can hit script by default, or I can hit, click on the action here. Now, by default, it's going to script the action to a new query window, or you can have it script it to a file, or to the clipboard, or create a new job out of it. So I'm going to, I'm going to script to the new query window, and that's the default action. That's why it's highlighted. So if I just click script, that's what it would do. And so in the background, it's going to show me a script of what it did based off of what I told it to do here in the window. So you can see that you can do, I'm going to move this over a little bit, that you can change the, the security setting in T-SQL, but what it does is it calls uh, the instance regwriteXP, which it does just what it sounds like. It writes to the registry, and it calls the, and it changes the key at the registry level. So you can do that yourself, right? You can go to that registry key and you can change that value yourself, or you can change it here by right-clicking, going to properties, and then security. And then once I do this and say, okay, it'll make that change, or I can script it and I can, and I can use it here on every single one of my boxes that has this, that, that has this exact key. I don't know if the key changes from one version of SQL to the next. This looks fairly standard, so we might get lucky, but I really couldn't tell you if you've got a SQL 2000 box versus a, a 2012 box whether this path would be the exact same. I've never checked. Um, honestly, this is one of the few things that I always do in the GUI just because it's so incredibly easy, um, so I just don't know. But if you did want to script it, this is how you would do it, and this is what that script would look like. Now when I run this, there we go, it says zero was affected, great. Now, 
what this doesn't tell you is that in order for this to take effect, you have to restart SQL Server. You cannot uh, reconfigure this on the fly. Uh, and, uh, and as a matter of fact, I don't think it'll show up in the GUI because the GUI is going to give you the run value. Okay, so it did show it in the GUI, but it has not taken effect yet. So if I right click here and say restart, it's asking me if I want to start the, if I want to restart it, yes. It's asking me if I want to restart the agent, yes. And there we go. Now we have a Windows authentication only server. And of course you can change it back the exact same way.